I want to start by letting you know that getting high quality video and audio from Quest 2, 3, and Pro recordings tends to be very convoluted. It doesn't help that there isn't much easily accessible documentation aside from this Meta support webpage. Also, Meta is constantly updating and changing features within their Quest headsets and compatible applications like the MetaQuest Developer Hub, MQDH for short. And that means this whole video or parts of it could become irrelevant at any point. I hope this video does help some people, but even more than that, I do hope Meta improves their native recording to a similar quality that PC-based vir virtual reality PC VR or MQDH recordings can currently achieve. If you couldn't care less about the context, you can skip ahead using the timestamps in the description below. For those that do want some context, I've had many questions from people about asking how I get such a large field of view and high quality recordings for my Dungeons of Eternity videos. Because you're watching this, I'll assume you've already had some trouble recording video from your Quest 2, 3, or Pro. Maybe your audio doesn't record correctly, your videos stutter, or you simply want a higher quality recording. I can't say my experience has been the same as yours, but I can assure you that recording video from Quest headsets tends to be more complex than recording flat screen videos. You can see here that if we were to record the raw video feed from each lens in the headset, this is what you would see on a flat screen display. That might help you understand where the complexity comes from. While there's still a lot to be desired, we now have a good amount of casting and recording tools available. So thank you to all the soft software engineers, developers, and everyone else who has made these tools possible for people like myself. There are three good options to record your Quest video that I am aware of. From easiest to hardest, there is native meta Quest recording, PC VR recording, and MQDH recording. Native MetaQuest recording tends to be easiest for most situations because it's built into your headset. You don't need to mess with the settings if you aren't looking for the best quality recordings. Then PC VR recording requires a PC capable computer and PC VR support for what you plan to record. But after you set it up, you can easily record your computer display for ca to capture a quality flat screen video from what you're seeing in the Quest. MQDH recording requires a computer, does not require PC VR, and has a different type of complexity for its connection. I forgot to mention in the video here, but it is very important to note that the MetaQuest Developer Hub does not record microphone audio for your recordings. So you have to have an external mic that you are recording in a separate channel uh, to your computer or to your phone, and then you combine in post-production. When you're in a video editor, you put those two the microphone audio and the recording audio together. Usually when I'm recording from MetaQuest Developer Hub, I'll start the recording on the computer. I will look at the recording that I'm about to create with the external microphone. I'll click the record through the pass through in the headset so I can match up when I click the record button and when the audio starts for that external microphone. I use the mod mic. It's probably the best option for this particular scenario. And I know that a lot of other VR content creators have used the mod mic or are still currently using the mod mic when they record these videos. I personally have gone down this rabbit hole because my favorite game, Dungeons of Eternity, is not a PC VR game. So I have some solid, solid experience using the native Quest recording and MQDH recordings. Long story short, I now record using the native MetaQuest recording for simplicity and the MQDH recording for reliability and quality. I do want to note that I haven't recorded much with my Quest 2 because I use the Quest 3 the majority of the time. However, I think it's safe to assume that recording on the Quest 2 and even the Quest Pro generally behaves the same as the Quest 3. All right, this is how you record video using the native MetaQuest recording feature so this is built into your headset you don't have to install anything you just get your headset and you've got it so this uh, right here you've got this little icon it says it's recording because obviously i am recording through it right now but before i click it it's more of a camera icon so you just have to click that uh, bam and then um, it'll show this little stop button 
and you can click that again, that'll stop it. But I'll show some recording settings. By the way, this is the camera app. That's where you can get to the recording options if you can't get it with this game. Uh, if you are in a game or in a VR app, then just clicking the menu or meta or Oculus button on your right controller, that inward facing bottom button, that is going to pull up this universal screen, which again, you can see this when you're in a game or an application. But if you're not, if you're just in the menu of the quest, then uh, you would have to go to this camera app, which could be on your universal menu here. If not, it would be in your library. So you'd have to search for it there. But the camera right here, you can see I am recording. It shows that I'm recording with the little dot. Uh, if I click on it again, I could stop recording. And there's also a shortcut. If you hold the meta or Oculus button and hold that right trigger, that'll stop and start the recording as well. Um, I tend to just use the buttons just to make sure, even though there is this little recording icon in the top right here. I'm circling it right now. You can't see it, but the person recording can see it, just not the actual recording. And yeah, so I could just use the shortcut to see it. That's a thing. Or you could just click the buttons. Then to get to the settings, uh, you could either go to the quick settings down here and then go to the system settings and get to it that way. Or you can just go to camera app and click on settings here. And then within the camera app, You've got all these different settings that you can customize to your liking. I'll give my recommendations and what I think of them here. So uh, starting with the sync media to Meta Horizon mobile app, I prefer not to sync it because I believe there's a limited amount of space that you can sync. And when I try to sync longer videos, it just does not work. It's slower. Plus, I, I sync to my computer a lot more than my phone. Uh, my phone is just if I want to submit bugs or screenshots or something else, um, I might use that uh, sync to mobile app. Otherwise, recordings that I'm putting on YouTube or any long recordings, that's going to just go to my computer with the wire. Um, then video capture indicator, that's the red dot that I was circling up here that you cannot see. And I would recommend having that on just to know when you are recording so you don't indefinitely record and run out of space. Uh, but it's up to you if this really annoys you having a red dot in the top right of your screen then maybe turn it off uh audio input levels there actually were sliders here for me for a little bit and i could adjust my in-game volume compared to my microphone volume however that just went away so i guess maybe the feature got rolled out and then it got rolled back right after it got rolled out something happened there and so I can't mess with that anymore. But it, as I tend to say, meta is changing things very often. And you might have a feature one day and not have it the other day or something might be janky. So you never know for sure. And yeah, just good to mention. Video recording, uh, changing the settings may negatively affect app performance during video recording. Just good to note, um, include mic audio. I always include my mic audio. Um, I guess if I'm reporting a bug or something, maybe I don't record or include mic audio, but uh, I just don't really mess with these settings and don't care enough to. Um, but that's there, just in case. Reset uh, recording settings. You can reset everything default if you messed with them too much and you don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, left eye or right eye selection. You can just choose between them. Right now I'm on left eye. So if I point at my left eye, I'm like poking my left eye right now, kind of. Uh, that's probably the center of the screen for you. This is my right eye. It looks basically like the same just on the right side to me, but you probably see it way on the right of the screen. Um, and then this is the center for me, probably more of the right for you as well. But yeah, that's that. That's how that works. Um, if for some reason you're like closing one eye and like looking through scopes with only one eye, you probably want that eye to be the eye you're recording from. And so I should probably change mine to right eye considering that, but I don't really bother with it. Uh, that's just the default. Image stabilization, I recommend uh, keeping that off. Um, tolerate what's going on. They can tolerate it, whether it's a little choppy or moving your head a lot. Uh, but if you want to turn on that Im image stabilization, that feature is here. It just might reduce the field of view 
decrease the recorded field of view, which is already pretty small. A lot of the times you can't see really far down for you. Um, whereas like when you're in the headset, you can see all these things, but it just cuts out things in the recording because that field of view is pretty small, at least in this native recording. Then aspect ratio, I recommend landscape. This is the standard 1920 by uh, 1080 pixels. And that's what most people watch YouTube and TV and all that stuff on. Um, however, the default is square. So you'll have to change it off of square. Uh, portrait, if you want to make YouTube shorts or TikToks or uh, something optimized for your phone in portrait mode, that's what you can do. Frame rate, um, I keep at 30 per FPS, but you can change it to 60 FPS. You just might take a performance hit uh, less fps and detract from app performance and uh, well maybe not fps but yeah i don't know i prefer to have a decent or good app performance so i haven't really messed with this but maybe 60 fps would be better for me again something you can mess with bitrate there are four settings so five megabits per second if you want a ton of space or the video to not take up any space when you record it, but the quality might be significantly lower. Uh, I don't know if there's like a huge difference between 5, 10, and 15, and 20, uh, but I'm keeping it at 20 because I tend to just offload the videos to my computer, which has enough space to uh, compensate or to store them. And yeah, higher bit rates improve video quality, but also increase file size. So sometimes my audio quality or video gets choppy audio doesn't sync up to video some random things like that happen i think that's because i have lower bit rate and if i keep 20 which i just recently switched to 20 um i think that helps so yeah that is how to mess with your settings there and i'm going to turn off this recording so i just go to my camera or i could go to my application here and click on that recording end button before you can use the MetaQuest Developer Hub to record, there are a few steps that you have to go through, and I'm going to leave the links as well as a little bit of instructions down in the description below. Uh, let me know if you do have any questions about that, but it should be pretty self-explanatory because this is one of those processes that actually is documented, unlike a lot of this other stuff that I am going over. Assuming you've followed all the instructions up until now correctly, you should have the MetaQuest Developer Hub installed on your computer. And you'll be able to, as long as your headset and computer are connected through USB-C cable, you can see that your device should be up here. And you will have all of these settings and all of these tabs on the left for you to go to. Most of them are going to be irrelevant to you if you're just looking for a high quality recording because this is a developer hub for developers and there are going to be a lot of developer tools in here that you don't need. But the ones that you might need, for one, ADB over Wi-Fi, Android Developer Bridge, and what that does is just allow your headset to connect wirelessly and you can enable this by clicking it and there's a little bit of a delay when you click and then it will sometimes say fail to refresh users. Um, but I don't know exactly what that means, uh, maybe like it sounds, but it enables that uh, Android developer bridge over Wi-Fi so you can connect to your headset without the cable now. So you can unplug, uh, but you can't start this over Wi-Fi without plugging in first. But yeah, once you're plugged in or unplugged in because you have Wi-Fi, then you can go to cast device. This is going to be the other important thing. Uh, Counterintuitively, this record video is actually going to be useless for you. Um, recording it basically just records the raw input of your lenses, which is not ideal for viewing on flat screen uh, or basically anything else at the moment. So that, again, you can ignore that. And we're going to go ahead and click on cast. Once you've started this casting, you can see what you see in VR and it 
automatically defaults to the one by one ratio, um, basically just a square and to your left eye, which again, you can change that like you can with the native quest recording, left eye or right eye. I just leave it on the default and this I'm going to change to cinematic in a moment, but we'll go through these features first. Um, not going to be super important here, forwarding camera input, unmuting audio, that's just for the computer and so it doesn't have anything to do with the recording. It will just record the audio in the recording. Take a screenshot, you can do that, that's a thing. Um, recording a video and yeah, that's what we're going to do. Then here's the settings here and basically for the streaming, basically casting to this uh, application to the MetaQuest developer hub. I put these at the lowest pos possible settings just so that I don't take a performance hit out of nowhere. I don't know how related this streaming setting is to the performance in the headset or the performance in the recording, all that stuff. I'm not exactly sure the relations here, but I just put streaming at the minimal possible settings because I don't need to be looking at it when I'm recording, but you can change these when you want. But yeah, five is the lowest here, bit rate. Um, lowest here is yeah, 1280, 720. And frame rate, 24 FPS. Adaptively skip frames, pause run recording. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have both of them on. I think, well, seeing here, disabling the setting may increase stream latency and we could do that, maybe? I, I don't know exactly how that would affect. That's one that, yeah, can't really tell you. But then the recording down here, this is what is important. So the target bit rate, you're gonna want at maybe 40 megabits per second. I haven't really tried 20 or, or above 40. 40 is actually pretty hard to get recording like long recordings and not run out of space on your headset if you have multiple games installed on there um so you could try 20 megabits per second if that quality works for you you don't have too much um of the stuttering or audio issues or anything like that then yeah keep it at 20 otherwise 40 should be nice should be good um i've had some good success with 40 capture format don't do max because a minute of footage is more than half a gigabyte and yeah if you want to keep space on your headset and your computer just keep it on auto because the, the quality is already good enough you don't need max um target frame rate most likely i mean maybe maybe there's some scenario out there where you do target frame rate 30 fps i always feel like that's good enough maybe 60 for some people, 120 if you want to go crazy. Um, but again, higher frame rates may impact in headset performance, which similar to the native recording, that's what it's similar to what it says. Um, so yeah, that is that. Uh, and I guess you can do auto as well. Uh, I tend to stick to 30. I've just found that this is where I get the optimal performance. And yeah, so that's the settings that I prefer to stay on. The dimensions up here, you can change to 16 by nine, uh, which is that 1920 by 1080. And I prefer to go to cinematic, which is same thing, 16 by nine, but it has a little bit bigger field of view. So I'll show here what the cropped is first. This is the cropped field of view, it kind of, lame i guess well not lame but you can see a little bit more here and it's it's that 1080 by uh or 1920 by 1080 but here in cinematic you have to do a vr app restart um and the screen may go black and sometimes you have to turn off and on your headset for this to work so i'm going to continue here All right, back in the same environment, you can see that the FOV field of view is a little bit higher than what you had before. It's kind of zoomed out. And this is 
closer to the amount of things that you can see in the headset. I think this might have something to do with combining the two fields of view of each lens together and then recording that somehow. I don't know exactly how this works, but this is what I prefer to record with when possible. Uh, this tends to get across the optimal vision that you need to see in the game to uh, when you're looking at things, you can see the same in the game that the flat screen recording can see as well. So yeah, there's that. And to start the recording, you would just click on this start recording button and it pauses it for me because I have that setting on. Clicking on stop recording saves it in the file manager as casting video and you would actually have to go into your headset files to get this recording and I believe it saves it in documents. Sometimes when I record these videos through the MetaQuest 3, either through the native MetaQuest recording or the MetaQuest Developer Hub recordings, sometimes they will come out really choppy and especially when I put them into my video editor, which I use DaVinci Resolve, when I put it in there and render it, it is just a super choppy video. I've got one or two of those videos on my YouTube channel um, and I, I upload them just because I want to do, but uh, it was really rough for me to watch and I preferred to get that smoother video. And so this tool, Handbrake, is a tool that I can't explain completely. It's a converter video converter tool. So it converts to different files or formats or something else. And I don't know much past that. And I kind of learned about it, but also can't really tell you how much I've learned about it because I don't fully understand this tool. But from what I've got out of it, it helps erase those choppy parts of the video and just makes the whole video smooth. And I guess it's compressing the video somehow or like turning it into less FPS than it is uh, because I do have these presets, which Dungeons of Eternity and Dungeons of Eternity co-op. And one is just the uh, dimensions, um, does it show? Yeah, yeah, uh, 1440 for this is for the MetaQuest developer hub. And then co-op I usually do uh, native recording, so it's 1080, and you can see in the video, I've got the quality set for 20, and yeah, I don't really know, I, I've got the frame rate set for 30, so I guess it's not really changing the frame rate, because I already recorded 30, and again, can't really tell you exactly how it's doing it, but whenever I go through and use one of these presets, and um, basically upload one of my videos here uh, and it just asks you to drag and drop a video into here and then it pops up like this and you just put in your preset or you create some preset how you would like the video to be converted or changed in some sort of way and then you would just click on start encode and it would go ahead and kind of like rendering your video in a video editor. It just goes through that process and eventually finishes up and then you have a smooth video. So yeah, if, if for some reason the recording settings that you're using don't perfectly record and you've got that choppiness, feel free to look at Handbrake and uh, maybe understand it better than I do and maybe have it help you. Let me know if you do understand it better than I do and explain it to me, I would love to know. But yeah, that is Handbrake. You can also add to Q, by the way. Oh, you can add multiple things to Q. So if I had another video in here, I could just click on the other video, add it to Q again. Well, it says this is already in Q, but then I would just start the Q and you can do multiple videos at once. But yeah, that is that. And you can do when done, uh, do a specific thing whatever you can save it as to a specific place in your folders. Um, I send, tend to change it from the default videos uh, file path to the file path I put my videos in. But yeah, up to you. And that is Handbrake. 
please do let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I missed or any recommendations that you have, as well as any questions about this whole nice and convoluted process that I just went through.